everybody. 2015 marked the 30th anniversary of the Garbage Pail Kids. And since it's the last day of 2015, I figured we'd go ahead and take a look at some of these. Now, I was lucky enough to hold on to most of my Garbage Pail Kids as a kid. As you can see here, there's a ton of them. And these things were just a huge part of my childhood. I loved these things as much as the Transformers. I mean, that's how big Garbage Pail Kids were. Now, one of the things I like about the Garbage Pail Kids and one of the things that attracted me so much to them is that they were totally spoofing the Cabbage Patch Kids, which was huge in the early 80s, mid 80s. Uh, so much so that parents were fighting over these Cabbage Patch dolls in toy stores because the supply just simply could not meet the demand and it was insane. And the same thing happened with the Garbage Pail Kids. As soon as a box of these cards came out and were placed on the shelves at 7-Eleven, Lionel Play World, etc., they were gone within a flash. And I mean, how can you blame kids for wanting these? At 25 cents for a package, I mean, you can't beat that. And to top it off, they came with gum, just like the baseball cards. I still have some of the gum. Dare me to chew some 30-year-old Topps bubble gum? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Now, there's high nostalgia for the 80s, which if you grew up in the 80s, you're well aware. They brought everything back, like I mentioned before, Transformers. I mean, they even brought back Gem. So, there are some goodies out there that I recommend people taking a look at if you're fans of Garbage Pail Kids. For one, this book that has every single Garbage Pail Kid in it from series one through five, which was the peak time for Garbage Pail Kids. And I mean, they have everything like the Garbage Pail Kids calendar. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. They even redid the Garbage Pail Kids. They uh, put out some new ones, so check those out as well. But there's nothing like the originals, and the Garbage Pail Kids had such a huge influence on me. With the artwork, um, the satire, it, they were just hilarious. They were disgusting, they were offensive, they were right up my alley. And luckily for me, my parents bought these for me, and I loved them. So the Garbage Pail Kids had a huge influence on my life, which I still feel up to this day. That and Mad Magazine, uh, I think, molded my really twisted sense of humor uh, to what it is today, which is just downright despicable, but whatever. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this list. I went ahead and compiled my top 10 favorite Garbage Pail Kids from my childhood. So let's go ahead and take a look because this is gonna be a lot of fun. Number 10. How could the most infamous of all the Garbage Pail Kids not be on this list? The face of the Garbage Pail Kids, Atom Bomb is a witty pun poking fun at the Cold War with a button in Adam's hand being pressed which ignites a mushroom cloud from the top of his head. While as a child I didn't understand the conflict between the United States and Russia, Topps nailed the satirical look on the arms race which in hindsight is absolutely hilarious. Number 9 Obviously I share a certain fondness for this one, considering that we share the same first name. But Wes Mess is actually quite clever, constructing together a garbage pail kid made exclusively of refuse. From the cigarette butt eyebrows to the apple core dimpled cheeks, Wes epitomizes everything in which makes a garbage pail kid a prized piece of trash. Number 8 I always loved this one as a kid because one, it has an executioner and a mask in it, and two, it has blood, which as an adolescent always attracted me. I just love the basket, which presumably has severed Cabbage Patch limbs stuffed into it, and what's funnier than the little patch of hair on Max's chest, made of the same yarn you'd find on those adorable Cabbage Patch kids' heads. Number 7 I had always enjoyed the Garbage Pail Kids in which a piece of pop culture or art was spoofed, so naturally Vincent Van Gogh is one of my favorites. As a kid I was well aware of who Van Gogh was and that he had cut off his own ear, which is what Van Gogh is pretty much remembered for nowadays. I mean, those scissors are a riot. But the artwork put into this piece which cleverly apes one of Van Gogh's self-portraits is outstanding 
and I definitely appreciate the genius of this particular character now more than I ever had as a child. Number 6 This one used to always make me laugh. Again, as a child I was attracted to the blood, but the fact that Cody has a smile on his face despite having all but one tooth knocked out, bumps and bruises all over his head, and a boot print embedded in his skull is what makes this one absolutely hilarious. There's nothing funny about getting beat up, unless it's in the form of a garbage pail kid. Number 5 Now I'm not sure when the phrase No Way Jose was coined, but back in 86 it was pretty new to me, and that clever name paired with a matador being hollowed out by a raging bull left me in stitches. I really love the artwork on this one, from Jose's bullfighting getup to the priceless shock expression on his face. Way too funny. Number 4 I didn't get the joke on this one until I saw it again years later as an adult, and it had me cracking up. The name is just so clever, with the head being kept alive in a jar of formaldehyde with tubes running in and out of it. This one was without a doubt aimed for adults, which many Garbage Pail Kids actually were, and makes me wonder why so many parents couldn't look past the gross nature of these works of art and see that many of the Garbage Pail Kids actually made people think. But what do you expect from the same decade that brought us the PG-13 rating and the PMRC? Number 3 as a kid, I was always fascinated with skulls, skeletons, and zombies, so naturally I loved Dead Ted. The artwork on this one is amazing, with a simple but powerful purple background, with the perfectly placed full moon behind a dead Ted climbing from his grave, half decayed with worms crawling out of his body. In my opinion, this is some of the best artwork done for a garbage pail kid, period. Number 2 so many parents wrote off Garbage Pail Kids as mindless trash, but this particular one defies that sentiment. Like I mentioned before, I have a fondness for the Garbage Pail Kids in which artists spoofed, and dangling Dolly Mirrors surrealist painter Salvatore Dolly's drooping clocks painting so well, it's remarkable. This particular kid had no meaning to me when I pulled it out of that first 5th series wrapper, but I immediately recognized the Drooping Clocks painting the first time I saw it afterwards and was instantly intrigued, asking my mother about it who then taught me a little bit about Salvador Dali. And I've been a fan of his ever since. All thanks to a mindless piece of trash I purchased in a wax paper package with cheap bubblegum. Honorable Mention Number 1 The two things I loved the most back in 1986 was Garbage Pail Kids and Transformers, and this ingenious hybrid combines the two. When I first laid my eyes on Roybot, I had to have it. It was love at first sight and has been my all-time favorite Garbage Pail Kids since the very beginning. It was my most prized possession at the time, and naturally my puppy got a hold of it and chewed up the corner. I was devastated, but luckily years later was able to get a replacement. Roy resembles Ultra Magnus more than anyone in the Transformers universe, and with his color scheme contrasting with the plain background, Roybot is aesthetically pleasing to the eye and is by far my all-time favorite Garbage Pail Kid. All right, so there you have it. That's my top 10 favorite Garbage Pail Kids. So there's a lot out there that were left off the list. There's tons more. Uh, what are some of your favorites? Uh, go ahead and just share in the comments below. And how do you feel about Garbage Pail Kids today? Would you let your kids collect them now? I mean, they were pretty offensive back then now that I look at them, but obviously they were hilarious. So I had a lot of fun taking a trip down Nostalgia Lane. I'd just like to say thanks a lot for watching this video. Happy New Year. Catch you later.